Okay, guys and gals, are you ready for another Battle Room Bible Study video? The topic for this Bible study is, Is your pride stopping you from hearing the voice of the Lamb? The voice of the Lamb, the Lamb, the one that died for your sins, the one that loves you, the one that desires a relationship with you, the one who conquered sin, gave his life on the cross for you, is your pride stopping you from hearing his calling? Let's open it for Lord Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son Jesus Christ. Father, I, I lift these viewers up to you. I pray for those who are lost. I pray that we would all drop our pride, but those who struggle with their pride, I pray you would hear this message and they would they would drop their pride and look to you and allow your Holy Spirit to begin doing better works in their life. I pray, Father, that that you would save many through this video. I pray that I would be minimalized and you would be maximized. I pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So, all right. So, uh, so what do you guys think? You, you, you like my new Bible study prayer chair? This is my prayer chair, man. This is it. Like, you know, the, the battle room. What, what, is, what is your reloading room? Is this a man cave? No, 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 no. Right? You guys hear me say, no man cave for me. Man cave, that's where we go to retreat. When we're losing, it's where we go. When we have sin in our life, we go into a cave because we, we don't want the world to see our sins. When we're hurting, especially men, we don't want people to know that we're hurting. So we go into this cave. We go as far into this cave as we can go. We tend to call that a man cave. Now, if, if you call your place a man cave, that's that's okay. I get it. But, but really, what is it? It's a battle room. It's a battle room. It's where you win. It's not where you win. It's where you win because of what Christ has done in your life. Better works of the Holy Spirit. You can't get to God without going through Christ. So now you have to ask yourself, are you not hearing the word of Jesus Christ because of your pride? Well, you know, um, uh, so I haven't had a, really any videos coming up over the last few days. And it's because I've been right here in the evening. Uh, Spending time with God one on one, and uh, you know, through conversations with people this week, it's, it's it's amazing. Like, I can be reading my Bible one night, and the next day I'm listening to uh, the Christian radio, and up comes this verse that I was just reading the night before. It, it blows my mind. That's just how God works, you know. And so, I've talked to a few people about what I'm talking about now. And so, just tonight, just tonight, my wife and I, my awesome wife and I, we had dinner with this lady in a, in a rehab home. She broke her leg, you know. And we were talking, and the lady said, she said, well, some people are born evil. And I just remained quiet and, you know, I let her speak. After she got done, I said, you know, it's not that some people are born evil. It's that we're all born evil. We are. This uh, modern day teaching that we're all born not being evil. No. We are born sinners. So through this conversation, this lady looking back on her life, 
in current days, she's older. She's a believer. But why is it that some of these people, through her life, when she looks back, some did evil deeds, others did heinous deeds, deeds that you would not want to speak about. And it still goes on today. Why? Why is this? So I had a, a note here, but maybe I don't need it. Maybe, maybe my brain's good enough, okay? Let's just see what the old high boys got for you. So, all right, I've got my smartphone. What I have is this is an app you need to get on your Bible or on your phone. This is the U version. Now, let's get real for a minute. I have no room in my walk in life for pornography. But I know, I know, there's a lot of men struggling with that. The sad thing is a lot of women struggling with that. No. No. We don't not look at pornography because God said not to. Instead, we don't not look at pornography because it is not in a line of God's will. I'm a man after God's heart. God says no pornography. He means no pornography. You need to do something about your pornography. Now, it can come across your phone. You can't serve two gods. You get you version on your phone. It's really hard to be looking at something that your pride wants you to look at and then go to prayer with your God. You can't pray to God and really come clean. Hey, bub. You're struggling with pornography. You need to get you version on your phone. See, this is this pride thing. This pride thing is your pride stopping you from hearing God's word. From is your pride stopping you from hearing everything that God has to say? So I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah on my clean smartphone. God loves my smartphone, man. He's all built into this, right? And um, so I'm going to go to Isaiah. And uh, if I can work my smartphone, the uh, book of Isaiah, great book. I'm going to go to chapter 14, then let's go to verse 12. So, I'm at Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. I want you to tell me who we're talking about here. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit in throne on the mount of assembly on the utmost highest mount of Zephon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Who are we talking about? His heavenly name was Lucifer. Earthly name is Satan. How you have fallen from heaven morning star, son of dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. How do you think that happened? Cast down to the earth. How do you think that happened? Once you who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne. There's a key word there. My I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zephon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself the most high. 
I will make myself the most high. You know, that that would be the most prideful statement in there if there wasn't so many words, I will, I will, I will. Now, let's go to Revelations. Don't ask me too much about Revelations. Know the basics. Okay, I'm going to go, I'm thinking, chapter 12, verse 7, so perfect. Tell me who we're talking about here. You've got to understand the enemy. You've got to understand what you're talking about. You've got to understand what pride does to any man that entertains it in the slightest. Pride knows no bounds. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, Lucifer. Michael, the angel, was in charge of the... Man, he was the killing force of the angels. You had Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel. I'm going to lost the words. Lucifer. He was in charge of the worship. Worship, right? Um, those of you who know, what was Gabriel's job? He had a job. He's an awesome angel, right? It's just, you know, slipping my tongue here. Michael? Oh, he was the warrior. So, we got a warrior fighting he who is in charge of worshiping. I think you see how this is going to go. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. This must have been a pathetic fight, right? But he was not strong enough. He, he ran the warship team. Come on, you're fighting the fighting angel dude here. And they lost their place in heaven. Lost their place in heaven. Um, there's more scriptures in your Bible that tells you God cast him out of heaven. It was no fight. Well, it was a fight. Uh, I'm going to tell you something in a second. Hang on. The great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? Okay, here's something I'm going to tell you. That right there, back when I was a teenager and I was really doubting God's word, I said, this, this Bible stuff's junk, man. Who are you, God? You don't know. This isn't real. These people sit in church week after week on Bible studies, stupid Bible studies. They believe this is garbage, right? Right there, that picture of what happened. I remember years ago, I was reading that. And then a verse caught my attention. You know, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth was formless and void. Something like that. <laughs> Cat's ripping my hand up. See, when I come out here, my dog goes in the house. The cat hangs out. He loves the word of Christ. So the earth was formless and void. think about that. Have you ever known God to make something that didn't have beauty, form, shape? Then you go all the way to the end of the Bible and Revelations and you see where, you know, this dragon gets kicked out of heaven. Must have been quite the fight. So much of the fight this is just my thoughts on the subject and my cats. He's 
over here praising me, not me, praising God. But he thinks I'm God. Don't ruin it. It must have been quite the fight. Because when Lucifer hit this earth, it lost its form. Think about that. God does not make something without sheer beauty. That's the one thing. That's the one thing that when we stand before Christ in judgment, just because of God's beauty, we will be held liable for not believing in God. You've got to believe in God when you see the beauty that surrounds you. But here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, we have formless and void. So when God made this earth long before Satan was kicked out of heaven, it was a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. You go, you go read Genesis on, on every bit of day one, day two, day three, and you're like, hey, bub, this globe was here long before that. That's why these carbon dating scientists, they, they come up with the stuff, they go, what's 10 billion years old? Yeah, because 10 billion years to us is just a blink for God. Earth was there. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous place. It was plentiful. It was beautiful. And then one day, Lucifer gets kicked out of heaven. He hits the earth. Explosions, you name it. What do we have? We have a serpent stuck down here with his demons. Why? Why? Why would Satan? Why? It's the same reason that people, human beings, do not. Stop to hear God's word. The reason, the bottom line, that Satan lost his position in heaven was set down, hurling onto this earth, is, and hurling is a huge word, okay, because of his pride. His pride. So when a human being is born into this world, you see these people, says bumper sticker, I was born okay the first time. Man, that's a perfect bumper sticker. Because you're just okay. That's all you are, you see. Christ wants to make you perfect. When we came into this world, we were hurled into this world as sinners. Why? Free will. God gave us the same thing as the angelic beings, free will. He gave us more free will. Okay? So, because of our free will, we come out of the chute bucking for a sin. And that little child came into this world and he wanted those chocolate chip cookies no one taught him to steal that. You say, well, his older brothers and sisters probably did. No, he was the first child born. His mom and dad never showed him that. They just said, no, you can't have the cookies. Guess what? He wanted those cookies. Well, take it a step further for you. He got in trouble for stealing the cookies. The next day, he stole the cookies. He did it again. What made him go back and take those cookies and not listen to the authority above him? His pride. Just wasn't about the cookies now. Hey, I got in trouble and I want those cookies. It looks cute, looks innocent, but don't forget, we were born into sin. So the question is, is why is it that some people 
live a life of disastrous sin all the way up until their old age? Is it because some people are born evil and others aren't? No. We're all born evil. The reason that some people do not hear the voice of Jesus Christ calling is they're too busy looking at their own pride. They will not stop looking at their own pride. And what did we what did we read in Isaiah? I will. I will. What does that translate to? Me. I want. I need. I hate. I covet. I murder. Oh, I've never murdered someone. Boy, I'd like to. See? It's about us. What's in here? And we're so busy focused on us that we don't stop to hear the voice of the one who is calling. And that voice is the voice of Jesus Christ. And the reason that is available to all humans is God has given us free will. Some people say, oh, I hate God. All God does is, you know, won't stop these wars. Now wait. If God stops the war, that means He's going to take our free will away. He's going to turn us into robots. Then those people say, Oh, I hate God. Now i got to do what He wants. What do you want? Why don't you follow the optimum plan set forth by God Himself? We don't do these because He tells us. We do it because it's in His will. Why don't we just listen to God? Free will. He gives us free will. We listen to God. You don't have wars. But we have wars. Why? Why? Why do we have wars? Pride in the world. Pride in the world. You, you break it down to any problem you see with any individual other than people that are crazy. I mean, that's crazy people. Demon possessed, some people, their mindset. Who can explain it? I can't explain it. That's why we have God. That's why we have Christ. When I'm talking about a person who's full control over their mind, you start analyzing them right down the line, right down the line, right down the line. You can say, you have a pride issue. You have a pride issue. Oh, you have a little pride issue, but it's just enough that you can't even hear the voice of Christ. And what did I say? You can't afford to have the even smallest amount of pride in your life. That is why, in my life, I'm humbled when someone does something nice for me. Because I'm not worthy of it. The minute I become worthy of anything, uh, my pride just reared up, didn't it? For me, I know God created everything in His glory. When I lift my pride up, I don't see His glory. When I reduce who I am, and I draw near God, God draws near me. What, what, one of you guys, go in the description box below, tell me what verse that is. See guys, I'm not perfect. It's just a Bible study. I'm not a preacher. It never came off that way. But you know who I am? I'm a believer. Believer in Christ. I'm a believer that said, I'm tired of living in sin. And I don't like this icky guy. I don't I don't like me. I, I've got problems, why? Because I was born evil. I can't fix this. You can't fix me. But you who is greater can fix me. You, you who employs Michael, a bad angel, you who created all. Who sent your son Jesus Christ into this world to die for me? You love me that much. A sinner like me. You you love me that much. Wow. All I gotta do is drop my pride. 
and I'll hear you. I want to hear you and look. There you are, my Savior. And I ask, what do you want me to do? Oh, be baptized. Okay. I want and I got baptized. I mean, you don't have to be baptized to go to heaven. But 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 if you believe you're gonna obey. So if you say you believe and you don't get baptized, you didn't really believe, did you? So you, you gotta work that out with God. Jesus Christ commands. Now go get baptized. That's what I did. Through all this, I realized what always stopped me from really believing in God was my pride. It was my pride. It wasn't that I never really believed in the Bible. I doubted a lot of things, just because I didn't understand it, but the bottom line was I was too busy justifying my beliefs, turning myself into a God. You'll never hear Christ. As long as you are focused on you, as long as you are edifying your own personal needs through your walk in life, you will never hear God. But you know, that's why people get saved in the most destructive points in their life because it's when you're on your knee and you put yourself in a position no one could save you from and that my friend is when we see we have no pride that is when we hear the voice of Christ so when you find yourself so far down in life you can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps you hear that voice of Christ, I'm telling you, my friend, that is when you need to have you version on your phone. You need to get a Bible. You need to get on your knees. You need to tell Jesus Christ that you need the Holy Spirit in your soul. You need to tell Christ you believe. I believe. Why? Because I just heard your voice. I just heard your voice calling in my time of need. No one else was going to rescue me. But you called me. You called me and I heard it. I don't need any more. I don't need a building to touch. I don't need a mountain to look at. I heard that. And there is no doubt what that was. And I believe. And what do you want me to do, Christ? Because you love me that much, I humble myself. And I want your better works to work through me. So I can reach out to someone else that needs to hear your voice calling. And you go and you get baptized. You get baptized in the name of Christ. If you don't know Christ, it's because the only thing you know is your pride. Your pride knows no boundaries. That's why you can have no pride. The smallest amount of pride is like a flame that's hungry. It knows no bounds. God has one bound. His sovereign authority. He doesn't change. He's the true north. He's sovereign. Sovereign means he can exist on his own and in 10 billion years from now he'll be exactly the same. Nothing has moved him. So where do you want to be? Do you want to rely on your pathetic pride? Do you want to go one more day? One more day on your pathetic pride? Or do you want to say, I've had it. I had it with me, God, and I'm ready for you. I am ready for you, Jesus Christ, because you died for my sins so I could have eternal life before you.
my friend, you have to drop your pride. If you don't drop your pride, you're going to turn out just like our good old acquaintance Lucifer. You don't want that. If Lucifer can't fight it, you don't stand a chance. So, my message to you, if you truly want to see the truth, the truth is Jesus Christ. You need to get on your knees. You need to cry out to the one that's calling you. Because he's calling you right now in this video, my friend. Right now. Do you think I was going to come home and do this video as planned? I had no idea. I didn't rehearse this. I sat down and the good Lord spoke through me. And he's telling you today, I love you. I'm not mad for you for anything you've ever done wrong. I just want you to reach out, take my hand, and let me show you a beautiful life. And that is, my friend, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we close in prayer? Lord, Father in heaven, I, I pray, Father, that uh, your word would be well received by many. I pray, Father, that uh, many would see that pride which blinds them from the truth. But when we take ourselves away, what we have is Christ. Christ, He who conquered sin. He who rescues us, not from Satan, but He rescues us from us. And with Him, Father, we draw near You. You draw near us. Satan leaves. There's no problem. So I pray, Lord, that this message would fall on the ears of those who are focused on pride. And they would have a desire and a hunger to cry out to Your Son, Jesus. Father, we thank You for this time of prayer. I thank You so much for... Uh, this channel that, that uh, your word can flow through this channel to those that don't know you and I, I thank you for that I pray you be glorified through this video and I will be minimized in your son Jesus name we pray Amen so uh, this this is what I do this this is what I do my, my life uh, uh, you guys you see the reloading videos you you see the, the fun that I have, but this channel is not my channel, it's God's channel. He's, he just tells me what keys on the keyboard to hit. I, I can't even play the piano, but when he says, Jim, get up there and play the piano, I just say, okay. You know, Guys, I don't even know how to reload. He just says, hey, teach these guys how to reload. I say, oh, okay. And he gives me reloading press, and he, he gives me components, and then I load everything, and I got a bullet, don't I? No, we got a cartridge, right? But so my channel is it's not about me it, it, it never has and it's got everything to do with Christ working through this channel and it, it doesn't have anything to do with just working through me it has everything to do with working through all the believers on this channel that always leave the comments and that always support those who have questions in any way but maybe someone in a Bible study that leaves a comment that's struggling someone else one of you comes along and you pick them up not because you wanted to, because that would have to do with your pride. But you did it because the Holy Spirit's in you. And the Holy Spirit is calling that other person. And you lifted them up through you, through the viewers. That's what this channel is about. Okay? So there we go. Awesome Bible study. So, all right, guys and gals. So, uh, hey, dinner was great. We, we had a great visit over two hours. This, have dinner with this old lady and she's just, just a fantastic best two hours of my week and my wife agreed so there we go so guys and gals that's the end of this video god bless get the bible on your smartphone and start reading god's word start reading god's word listen to the voice of he who calls we'll see you on the next